Star and Stripe is an amazing hero, almost a demigod, but is it possible to defeat her? What's up? It's Truth Hero, and today we're talking about Star and Stripe, and how one might go about taking her and her amazing New Order quirk on. Not that you'd want to, she's an amazing hero, but if you're a villain like me, how would you take her down? First, just so we're all on the same page about unraveling the mysteries behind her strength, let's review the specifics of her quirk. She can touch any object, call out its name, thus identifying it, which is very important, and from then she can impose any rule she thinks of upon it. To anyone that's ever done a top 10 OP quirks in My Hero Academia video, go ahead and submit another draft, because this quirk is either the number one or number two quirk in the entire series behind One For All and All For One. Comment down below, where does this quirk rank in all of My Hero Academia? Despite this fantastical power, there are restrictions on her quirk. There's a limit to how much strength enhancement she can give herself. And this might be because she's a biological entity and biological target of her quirk, which we'll get into later in this video. But for now, just know that she can't make her body or herself become all-powerful. She can, however, be all-thick. <laughs> Dang. I didn't think I'd ever be attracted to a cloud. It seems as if her quirk has less restrictions when she's targeting non-biological entities. We see in the previous chapter that she touches the atmosphere and creates a vacuum, and she manipulates those lasers in amazing fashion. I mean, that's controlling light itself, it doesn't really get any better than that. However, there are limits. I believe that her quirk can't do any metaphysical things to a target. Let me explain. Remember when you watched Aladdin? Not that version, the good version when you were a child. Genie had three rules. I can't kill people, I can't make people fall in love, and I can't bring people back from the dead. Things like dying, maybe falling in love, and other states or concepts that are more abstract are not subject to her quirk. Basically, the rule she imposes on someone or something has to be specific, it can't be vague. I think it needs to be physical and measurable. Now hold the phone for a second. This does not mean that she can't use her quirk to do something metaphysical. If she wants a metaphysical result, for example, death or dying, if she wants you to die, well, what is dying? What is death? That's a good question. She would need to define a physical condition to get the metaphysical result of death. This is why she says, if Tomura Shigaraki moves at all, his heart will stop. Maybe if she wanted you to fall in love with her, she might touch you and then say, if Truth Hero moves, his brain will have a positive reaction to my pheromones, thus I would find her attractive and fall in love with her, and so on and so forth. Hey, a guy can dream, right? She must also identify the target correctly, and if it's a person, they must identify with the label she gives them. This is why her cardiac arrest rule doesn't work on Shigaraki. Is he Shigaraki? Is he all for one? Is he Tenko? Is he me? I don't know. Who knows at this point? Since Shigaraki has multiple consciousnesses with all for one, and his personality is unstable, he can't be identified, and thus he can't be subject to her rules that she tries to impose on him. Now, had Star and Stripe known about Shigaraki's shared consciousness with All for One and him exhibiting multiple personalities, a smarter play would have been to impose a rule on the physical body. For example, this male body with white hair, if it moves, will then suffer cardiac arrest to the heart residing inside it. Again, this isn't a guarantee since Shigaraki's body changes mid-fight, his hair grows longer if you remember. So, if that's the case, would it identify as the same body in which she touched and named? I don't know. It's coulda, woulda, shoulda speculation at this point. So, given these restrictions and some interesting scenarios surrounding identity and personality of these characters, here are my ways one could defeat Star and Stripe. Number 1. Remove Star and Stripe's ability to speak. Removing her ability to talk reminds me of when in Hunter x Hunter there's the prison fight. 
This prisoner wanted to rip out Tompa's throat so that he couldn't speak and say, I surrender. Therefore, he would have no way to end the match. So, as long as the prisoner doesn't kill him, the prisoner can stand by, waste the hero's time, and for every minute he wastes, he takes off his own sentence and the sentences of his prisoner team. It's a cool arc, great series, I highly recommend. Needless to say, if Miss America suddenly went mute or even had laryngitis for a couple of days, it'd make it very hard for her to verbalize anything, thus hard for her to activate the second condition of her quirk. Getting close enough to her neck to be able to do this is an entirely different story, and even if you could, don't forget that she's strengthening her body with one of her rules, of which she can maintain two at a time. Never mind. In the latest chapter, My Hero Academia Chapter 332, we see Shigaraki do this, and he gets close and puts his hand on her face. So perhaps since she just used a different rule on those missiles, which amazingly still didn't do anything to Shigaraki because he's big regeneration brain, perhaps he can decay her now. Number 2. Copy her moves. The second method would be just give her a taste of her own medicine. You could create a vacuum like she did to Shigaraki, thus making it impossible for her to generate sound and fulfill that requirement of her quirk. Same concept really, she must call out the name of her target in order to impose a new rule on it, so no air, no voice, no rule. Someone with an atmospheric quirk that could create a vacuum, or someone with a space or a gravity quirk that could pull air away from her could make it impossible for her to speak, thus we'd never even hear what label she decided to call them. This raises an interesting question about her quirk. Does the person she identifies and labels need to hear her voice in order to recognize and accept that label? We know if she touches an animate object like a person, they need to be on the same page and identify with what she labels them. If she touches me and says, that man, then the new rule is imposed on me. But what if I never hear her voice? Someone like Jiro could use sound to block themselves from hearing Star call out an identification of them. Even if Star called out the label, as in there's no vacuum or gravity quirk, so long as her target doesn't read lips, they might be able to wear headphones or use sound on themselves, like Jiro, and be immune to the second requirement of her quirk. This got me thinking as well, what if Star and Stripe had an awakened quirk? Could she say the identity or label in her head and that would count for the second requirement? She wouldn't have to call it out or use any air at all? What if she could touch the air or the ground something is standing on? Something that her target touches indirectly and then have that count for the first requirement of her quirk. Similar to how Shigaraki can touch the ground and the decay way moves through it, and to a person or an animal or an object or a building that's touching that ground, could Star and Stripe have this same amazing power? Number 3. Lose Your Identity You know, now that I think about it, Star and Stripe might have a very hard time facing someone from TikTok. I do identify as Korean. Hey guys, let's talk gender, specifically Libra genders. Hi, my name is Liana. I use they demon pronouns. If someone's able to shift their identity like Shigaraki, or if they can transform themselves, like let's say Toga drinks some blood, gets someone's quirk and their appearance, then they're able to escape any label Star puts on them, and thus aren't subject to any rules she puts on them. Star vs Toga, that would be an interesting fight. I don't think she could do it alone, but she could at the very least be immune to any rules that Star would put on her by touching her, she could just shift her identity. Although I think Star would just punch her at that point. And I think that's what we have to remember. This is only one part of the puzzle. Sure, shifting your identity helps if she makes contact with you, but it doesn't protect against the rule that she puts on the ground or the air or anything else that's in the environment. And this is why Shigaraki is a good opponent. He can escape any of her requirements for any rule. I guess another creative way to defeat her would be by negating her ability to touch someone. If she faces Mirio, for example, she can't touch him, and her putting a rule on the ground or atmosphere may not matter at all. Monoma copying her quirk might be interesting as well. She could make a rule and then he could just undo the rule. What if he made a rule on top of her rule? 
We did learn in this most recent chapter, 332, that Star has a limit to how much she can strengthen her body, at least in relation to what rules she can impose on other things, especially non-living things. However, she still has a strong body, even without her putting a rule on it. So will Shigaraki be able to decay her? Will he even get a damaging touch or hit in on her? What do you guys think though? Is this the end for Star and Stripe? Will Shigaraki decay her? Or does her quirk have a few more surprises in store? Have I overlooked any weaknesses of her quirk? And how would you personally go up against Star and Stripe? Let me know down below in the comments. As always guys, thanks for watching. In terms of making content, I just wanted to make a video. I don't have a set schedule, I can't say that I'll make chapter reviews every week but I definitely wanted to get back out there and use a different software. Um, I'd like to focus on video editing, maybe for YouTubers and streamers, and of course I'm busy with work, so there's, there's no schedule of content, but I just wanted to make a video. So thanks for all the support, and uh, until next time, which hopefully won't be so long, plus ultra.